Are you all ready out there? All ready. Here we go. One, two. Good morning, everybody. Now, that song I just played is called It Had to Be You. And I'll give you some data on that. Um, that was written in 1924 by Isham Jones and the lyrics by Gus Kahn. It's a great song. It's still being played today. As a matter of fact, I would play it probably every second gig or so. And um, it's w considered to be a standard. So there's your cultural enrichment for the morning. Um, there you go. And here you are. You tune into this show to hear an interview, and the host comes on and plays a great song on a, a trumpet. Well, actually, it's a cornet. But if I say cornet, a lot of people don't relate to that. So I just say trumpet. Anyway, this is... Life After Scientology, and I'm Ron Miscavige, and I welcome you to this show. Now, before we get started with the interview, I have a little business to do, and I want to acknowledge some people who have become patrons, and it's very much appreciated. Uh, as you all know, we don't have a sponsor, so this helps with the ongoingness of this show. So please acknowledge Ralph and Catherine for $5. Thank you very much. And then Amy, Sharon, $2. Thank you very much, Amy. And Teresa Atkins, boy, that sounds familiar to me. Five dollars. Thank you very much, Teresa. And then um, Victor DeLillo. I hope I didn't murder that Italian name for five dollars. So thank you very much, all. And any of you out there who'd like to contribute, please go. And uh, it's, it's on my website, therealronmiscavige.com. And just go to where it says become a patron and you can do so. Anyway, um, I want to get right into the show because we have an important topic to take up today. And I want to tell you, we're going to mention something that you can hear the recording that I'm talking about if you go to the description of this, the link of L. Ron Hubbard's voice and him saying exactly what he, you, we're going to talk about is right there so you can listen to it. If you go to the link that's in the description and it will also be in the comments. So I think I've taken care of all the business, and I want to get right into the show. And, of course, we have my dear friend Karen de la Courier back, and she's a, a wealth of uh, great information, and she has great insight into this because she spent over 40 years in the cult getting trained up to be one of the top uh, auditors, uh, top case supervisors. You, they, they call it techie, and she's done it all. So I welcome you to the show, Karen, and uh, good morning to you. Good morning. Hi, right. everybody. All right. Now, um, I want to take up something that is important for you to know out there, and that is this. Because Scientology just parades around this uh, slogan you can be a scientologist and you can be any religion which i'm going to tell you right up front nothing could be further from the truth than that statement and we have l ron hubbard's own voice own voice saying this and karen do you want to just say what he says and then the people can punch up the link and hear it yes um this is a quick two-minute clip that everybody should hear because it's L. Ron Hubbard, the founder, in his own voice, in the flesh, so to speak. This isn't a report or hearsay that he said. This is in his voice. 
And Hubbard said very clearly, there was no such thing as Jesus Christ. Christ did not exist. Christ was fiction. It was something from an implant. Implant, it, just to explain very quickly, is a sort of brainwash when your mind has been infiltrated with something and you're brainwashed and you believe it. That's a sort of sharp, quick definition of implant. So basically, Hubbard said, that Jesus Christ and all belief in him was just some brainwashing technique from long ago, that Jesus did not ever exist. And Howard explains this very clearly in this two-minute clip in the description. And what Ron was just telling you is the lie Culture of Scientology just lies, 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 lies. One of the biggest lies is you can be a Christian and a Scientologist, which is just nonsense. You can't even belong to the Rotary Club. I know, I know, I know people who were sent for ethics discipline because they did Freemasonry, which even though uh, Scientology tends to uh, use some of the Freemasonry is based on going up a higher level, higher level high structure. And that's if Scientology ripped off anything from Freemasonry, it's a bridge of different acquiring. You, you do this level and then you get on to the next level and so on. But you can't do anything else, nothing else. You absolutely cannot have another belief, another faith, another religion or a practice. Um, I was telling Ron about a girl who was an athlete who was doing breathing exercises, yoga, breathing exercises. And she was just told, absolutely not. You cannot do breathing exercises while you have counseling and do Scientology. So she, she exited. She departed. Can't do breathing exercises. <laughs> yeah. well, so, I'll, yes. No, I, I'll Go tell ahead. you, it is, there, there's other things. Uh, there was a, a movie, as a matter of fact, uh, a friend of mine from Las Vegas sent me the movie to look at it. It's called The Secret. And basically what it is, is it's a girl, I think her name was Byrne, like B-Y-R-N-E, that kind of was the moderator for it, and they had a lot of successful people on. And they were talking about basically the law of attraction, which for all of you listeners out there, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go on the Internet and you can look up New Thought Movement and look up the name Atkinson or Charles Hannell, um, just as a couple names, and you'll find they have books. And some of these you can download as a PDF. And they talk about the Law of Attraction, which is based on positive thinking. I mean, if I want to boil it down to one statement, it is positive thinking, but a certain way to do it and very disciplined way to do it. And this, you can change your life. You can be better at what you're doing. You can uh, kind of hook up with people that will help you in business or maybe meet the right person that you, you'd like to be with. And it's, it's a simple thing to do, and it's basically positive thinking. There were people who did that because they wanted to use that to make more money so they could go up the bridge. In other words... They were using it as a tool to make more money to give it to the Church of Scientology. They were considered an ethics particle. They had to undergo ethics and a sec check for doing this. Now, this has nothing to do with condemning Scientology or going against them, but they felt, it, it, well, L. Ron Hubbard feels that anything is a threat to his making money by people going up the bridge. That's just another example of that, Karen. I wanted to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember Oprah Winfrey endorsing the secret. 
on yeah. a show. Oh, yeah. And there was a wave of like, whoa, this is some altered, uh, you know. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, Ron. Scientology has no God. Yeah. There is no God. Yeah. And while Hubbard says there was no Jesus, and there was, I mean, Jesus Christ was, um, he never wrote a book. He was never on TV. He never had a radio show. He never had a YouTube channel. He never Twittered. He never nothing. And over 2,000 years since he lived, yeah. people look at him as an icon. He had kindness. He had love. He had brotherhood. He was, he was, he's remembered 2,000 years later I without know. ever having done anything. I know. And yeah. no matter what you think as to whether your belief in him that he was the son of God or whatever, his word is still going around right. and helping people. Right. I mean, compassion right. was the biggest thing that, as far as I can see. His compassion, and it is exactly the opposite in Scientology, yes. is not compassion. It's brutal punishment. Break yes. up a family. Punish a person so they do what you want them to do. Anyway, you t take that further because uh, people tune in and listen to you. They hear me all the time. And, uh, you know, I like listening to you, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, there's a complete absence of compassion and kindness. The kind of words you associate with a religion or a church is a benign quality of fellowship and love. And Scientology, traditionally, in mm. their culture, absolutely poo-poo such sentiments. Yeah. It's milita militaristic courts of ethics, committee of evidence. It's domination. Yeah. Now, uh, what I, but, but I, what I wanted to get back to was how Scientology very much hide the fact that there is no God. Right. When anyone walks in the door and asks, well, it's a church, is there, you know, is there a higher being that we pray to or we communicate to? Yeah. Scientology very much does a bait and switch. And it says, that's, there's, those things are answered when we go higher up the levels. Yep, yep. They call it the eighth dynamic, and it's secret. We don't discuss God right now, your lower level. Yeah. When you get there, you will understand. I want to tell you that that's a lie. <laughs> As Ron said, I've done everything on every level to the top, Upside down and inside. There isn't a course in Scientology that I have not done. There is no God in Scientology. And there is no almighty creator revealed just because you do everything to the top. That's nonsense. What Scientology wants you to realize is that you, you are God. You are the creator. Yep. And of course, when somebody walks in the door, if Scientology was honest and not doing a bait and switch, they would say, you know, we're not a, we're not a church that believes in God. We believe that you, you are really part of God and a co-creator with God. People, some people would just walk out the door and yeah. say, this is, this is just rubbish. Yeah. This is nonsense. But Scientology hide that. The point I'm trying to make here is how much Scientology hides the fact. Now, Hubbard said there was no Christ. And you can listen to this clip in the introduction to this show. Yeah, in the description. So of course, only yeah. two minutes, but yeah. please listen to it. But while Hubbard says there is no God, there was no God, he then doesn't replace it with anything godlike 
or spiritual. The only spirituality in Scientology is exorcism. Scientology believes you are a composite of one to four million attached spirits that hang around you, that are attached to your body or attached to you. And the tens of thousands of dollars they extort from you and gouge out of you, ultimately, from the level called OT3 to OT8, is to jettison these attached spirits. So it's a kind of voodoo church, if anything. I don't know if you experienced or seen exorcisms on TV. Well, wasn't was, was Rosemary's Baby an exorcism? I don't remember that now. Remember that old movie? Yeah, yeah. The most famous movie was called The Exorcist. That's right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that was kind of that was a scary movie, and yeah. there've been lots of other movies. Now Scientology has it down to nothing like this drama of screaming and yelling for the demon to leave. It's a very, very practical way that you talk to the spirit and you ask what 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 is he being what is he doing you know right and who who is he you know and it's very polished very fast and uh, i i don't want to get into that too much because i want to do that later on in the show or maybe in the following show karen okay but, uh, just if Sorry. we could we could let it there because uh toward the end of this if time permits and i don't know if it will today because I still want to follow this up very thoroughly because it's an important point. But then we will get into uh, the area of Scientology called OT3. And we will get into detail on it because it's worth hearing. Yes. And you can hear, well, one of the thing is my, from an analytical, practical point of view, how could this have happened the way it's described? I, I want to get into that on my end here, and you, I'm sure you're going to get into it on yours. But let's continue on. With, as a matter of fact, I, I'll tell you what, to follow up with what you're just saying, there was a guy, was it Ray Cassano? He's an OT8, and he says, I am a Scientologist, and I'm also a Christian. And I think Juliet Lewis also said it, didn't she? Oh, yeah, there's different celebrity stars that say, I'm a Christian and a Scientologist. This is all PR puff nonsense. That great guy you're talking about, he was, he's Mark Bunker, a wonderful guy in Clearwater, is running for city council. Right. And they had a, the downtown development board recently had a meeting, and that's where Ray Cassano said, I'm a Scientologist and I'm also a Christian. This is a blatant lie. I, I tell you, the, the, the way they can do it is just, it blows me away. I mean, with a straight <laughs> face, you know, a nice suit on and well-groomed and everything. Of course I'm a Scientologist and I'm a Christian too. Why, why do you even doubt me? And they're fucking liars completely and utterly. But it's not. that's not the only thing they lie about. You could take the international executives who have been pounded into pulps with the treatment they've had, and they will swear to God they've never seen any abuse. They would go and perjure themselves mm -hmm. rather than come out with the truth on this. That's how much they're in, uh, well, they're lost. They're, they're no longer people. They're just kind of particles. Anyway, go on, Karen. You know, it, it's getting old, Scientology's denials. They deny, 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 deny. It was wonderful to have the third lawsuit emerge this week, the big lawsuit. And so far, Scientology just denies, no, no, it didn't happen, it didn't happen, it didn't happen. So I don't know how Scientology can deny that Hubbard said no. there was no Jesus, there was no Christ, and it was just brainwashing that if anyone accepts it, they have been implanted or brainwashed into believing. Yeah. So, so, so this this is a, a, a sh this is not going to be a one-hour show like we've 
is going to be a shorter show, but we wanted to explain. And I might be saving people half a million dollars because once you get trapped into this belief, the fixed idea, yeah. Scientology will handle my baggage. Scientology will have the answers to my case. When you get that fixed idea, you beg, borrow, steal yeah. money to do these levels. And Ron and I have just saved you half a million dollars, theoretically, which you might have given the cult to do these esoteric levels, yeah. which are the road to nowhere. Nowhere. And I'll tell you something. Once you get in that frame of mind, it is not just that you're brainwashed, but you also have a compulsion to keep going on, thinking that if you don't go on, you're going to miss that next level where all is revealed to you. Do you see what I'm saying? It isn't just like, well, I, I want to do this to become better. No, you, you feel compelled to do it. it i got to tell you, and I've said this in the past, it's probably the cleverest scam that's ever been perpetrated on the public. The Scientology story, okay? And these people who get to that frame of mind where they're convinced everything that L. Ron Hubbard is saying is biblical truth, and he's actually one step down from being a supreme being, if not considered to be a supreme being by some people. Once you get in that frame of mind, yeah, you feel compelled to go up the bridge. And the Regis will absolutely do anything. They'll get you to borrow money, bankrupt you, uh, take your kids' college education to pay money to them. And then when you get to the top of the bridge and uh, you get to OTA and uh, you get truth revealed, Karen, you know what they tell them on OTA. Do you want to just say it? <laughs> well, look, you've spent a million dollars and you've done the highest level of the church called OT8. Now, every level has something called an end phenomena. What this means is you've got to get a certain result, a certain awareness, a certain cognitive enlightenment and OT8, this is this is this cost you a million dollars. The end awareness cognition is I now know who I am, not, and I'm ready to find <laughs> oh and I'm ready to find out who I am. Wait a minute. You're saying <laughs> it's I now know who I am not. <laughs> and now I'm ready to find out who I am. <laughs> you said that so beautifully. Uh, I, you've spent a million dollars, and you now know who you are not. Boy, that's a relief, and it only cost me a million. Gee, I'm really happy <laughs> I'm, now. I'm now ready to move forward to find out who I really am. Well, we Does that say, sound provocative and interesting? Well, I'll tell you something. We saved a lot of people a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, geez. That's... Well, Ron, I do agree with you that we really get into OT3 on the next show. But I think that we've hit a nice... This, this is a good point. I, I have now found out who I am not. Imagine that it cost you years of your life and all that investment to find out who you are not. And but now you're ready to move forward to have Scientology reveal to you who you really are. Well, I'll tell you, that's, uh, that's just saving a lot of people a lot of money if you ever felt compelled, and I mean compelled to do it. Those of you who aren't Scientologists realize that people in that cult can get into a frame of mind that they will pursue that the way a cat will pursue a mouse. And if you've ever seen a cat and he senses there's a, 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 mice, a, a mouse around, he doesn't give up until he gets that mouse and he's after it all the time. And this is the frame of mind you get into thinking that when you get to that level, you're going to be this superhuman, 
super spiritual being, and it turns out not to be true. And I'm being very gracious when I put it in those words. So I do agree. I think we should get into OT3 on the next show. And uh, I, I'd i like to end it right now and, and let people yes. ponder what we just th- did, what, what we just revealed to you. And uh, Karen, I got to tell you, it's, uh, I'm really glad you, you're part of this. I thank you very much for coming on the show. My pleasure. And uh, all of you out there, if you'd care to contribute to this, you could become patrons. And, uh, you know, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the show and get other people to do the same. And listen to that clip uh, in the description, and it's also in the comments. So, for now, I am Ron Miscavige. This is uh, Life After Scientology. My guest has been Karen De La Courier, and I thank you very much. And from... Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. From me to all of you out there, I will see you on the next show. Bye-bye now. <laughs>